crafty friends, this is Jen from Katahdin Crafts. I'm so excited to be the April guest designer for Trinity Stamps. I absolutely love their products and today I'm using some of my very favorite products to make a wizard slimline card. They have a great line of slimline dies. Their wizard stamp sets are wicked cute and super fun to work with. Alright, getting right into it. The first thing that I did was cut a piece of 140 pound watercolor paper to 8 and 3 quarters by 3 and 3 quarters. Then I used Distress Oxide sprays and started layering the different colors with some um, spray of water as well. And the first color I used was Picked Raspberry and then Wilted Violet and some Chipped Sapphire. And then I would squirt it with my, my water bottle and then hit it with my heat tool and I just kept on doing that in layers and every time I would squirt it with the water it would reactivate the ink and so then I could push that around and move it with the heat tool and I just kept on doing this until I got to the the effect that I wanted this was the first um, weekend actually that I started using these I've had them for a while um, but just sitting there on a shelf collecting dust so I wanted to dig them out and check them out I love the effect that they give and um, so here it was. I got a chance to play with it and I was excited. And it did, it did took me a little bit of a learning curve with it and I think I did okay. Again, I just kept on layering. Um, it's amazing how different it looks from wet to dry and I did like the wet look because it was um, just shinier. But I did, I ended up spraying it with a little um, sheer shimmer craft spray and sparkle color after and that gave it a really nice mystical look that I was looking for for this card. And as you can see, I just kept on going. I did get it all over my fingers. I probably should have put some gloves on. That would have been a wise choice. Um, I had some chip sapphire on my fingers for, a, you know, a, a good day and a half probably. And then my last thing I did is I squirted it again with water, but instead of drying it this time, I just blotted it with, um, the, with a paper towel, and that gave a little bit of a different look. And then I squirted it, like I said, with the Sheer Shimmer Craft Spray and Sparkle, and then I grabbed some Distress Paint and Picket Fence and I put a little bit of water to thin it and I grabbed a paintbrush and I just splattered in the splatter box again. And the interesting thing with this is that it didn't set when it dried, it didn't dry white. It actually reacted with that picket or the picked raspberry um, the most and it, it gives it more of a pink feel to it. And then I wanted the moon to stand out, so I painted some of the Distress Paint on there right directly and let that dry. And then I used a little Hero, Hero Hues Unicorn ink, and I used a round-tipped foam brush, and I kept on kind of twisting it because I was getting, I wanted to get like a, a halo effect around the moon. So, yep, I just kept on twisting that and getting that at the... The softer edge and then I grabbed a little bit of a, 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 a small blending brush and I went around the edges to really soften that and then I wanted it to really look like that moon look so I grabbed some frayed burlap distress oxide ink and just touched it a little spots to kind of make it look like the craters next I'm using Trinity's awesome layered birch stencil set it comes with a set of four um, plus all the negative trees I used a little pixie spray in order to get them to stick down to my project and the first one and well and I wanted to make sure with the pixie spray that see all the little delicate pieces that they have with the intricate um, tree tops so I wanted to make sure that those were all pushed down for each layer I used distress oxide ink the first one was frayed burlap and then this one is going to be black soot again I used the pixie spray make sure that that was adhered and I just went ahead and tapped in and went in circles making sure that I got a good coverage. And do you see how already with just the two layers, how the forest is already coming together? I mean, these, these stencils are really cool, really amazing. And as you can see, they were, you know, they're smaller than the slimline card size. So I just had to lift it and push it back down, which is not a big deal. And then this last layer is antique linen that I'm using for a color. I wanted them to be a little bit more, um, a little bit brighter because of the stag that's coming that is supposed to be mystical and misty and lighting up the area. So I thought that that would be a nice look. And I just, I wanted to make sure that that was really dry before I went ahead and embossed on it. 
So I hit it a little bit with the heat tool and then I did let it sit overnight. So now we're going to start working on Harry. Harry's robe is from Wizard Friends set from Trinity and actual Harry is from Magical Wizard stamp set. So what I did is I first stamped out the robes and then I stamped on the stamp masking paper. I stamped another robe and then I fussy cut that out so I could use it as a mask. And then I put the mask on and then I stamped Harry's head on afterwards. And then I started to color him. Um, the robes I did in all C colors, C3, C5, C7, and C9. And I just went from lightest to the darkest colors and back again and just blended those to make it look like a dark robe. You can see it just I just worked kept on working that to get a nice blend just a little bit at a time go near the edges and then working my way out and also to point out that when I did stamp the images on um, the wand and Harry and the robes I did use a Copic friendly ink so that wouldn't smear with the alcohol that's in those markers and then for his collar I used R89 and R85. First I laid down the R85 and then I did some shading with the R89 just to make that look like it's a maroonish red for his robe. And I did the inside of his little sleeve in the, um, the darker red. And then for his face, I used, I used E51 for the, the lighter base and then E55 for the darker shading. Um, and then for his hair, I used a, a several different E's as well, E33, E31, E35, and E37. And on the wand I used also, I used those the darker browns. And you can see those all up on the screen. And then I went ahead and added his glasses. And there, now he definitely looks like Harry. Next I'm going to use Trinity's Slimline card series. On the stitch card panel, I'm going to use the second to the largest one that fits perfectly into the scalloped card panel, the largest one. So they fit perfectly together. That makes a nice frame. I'm going to cut the forest with the stitch card panel. And then I'm going to um, use, well, most people would call this a deer, but for this purpose, I'm calling it a stag. So I'm going to stamp the stag with Hero Arts um, Unicorn Ink. And this is from Trinity Season Greeting Silhouettes. I'm going to do this a few times because I wanted to get that as white as I could. And then I'm going to heat emboss it with Hero Arts Clear Embossing Powder. And well, first I'm going to do a layer of the Versamark. And I always tend to forget to put my embossing powder on the, to, to make it so it won't stick around the edges. So I put that on a little bit late. And I'm not sure if a lot of you know the whole story behind Harry Potter and the stag but it is his, what they call his Patronus. And in the book series, a Patronus is a form of advanced magic, which even the most qualified wizards can struggle with. So Harry Potter was actually one of the youngest wizards to cast one a Patronus at the age of 13. And I thought it was fitting for what was going on in the world right now, because what it, what it signifies is a, a shield, and it's a positive force of hope, happiness, and the desire to survive. So I thought all of us could use a little bit of hope, happiness, and desire to survive right now. And getting back to the card, I actually didn't like how the just with the ink and the clear embossing powder worked with the stag. So I went ahead and I used Versamark and I had put it right back onto the stamp platform where I had it and I stamped it again and then I put clear emboss or excuse me, white embossing powder on it that time and that made it stand out a lot more. And then I used Trinity's shine brighter laser cut two piece laser layering stencil set um the first layer i used to as a guide to put down the magical sparkles that i wanted to use for spacing cuz i knew that i was going to use that later so i went ahead and i stamped those again the same process with the um the hero arts unicorn ink and then the clear embossing powder but again, I didn't like how that turned out. It wasn't bright enough for me, so I went ahead and I, I again, I did it with the Versamark and the white embossing powder. And now I'm, I'm using that stencil, and this is why I used it to line up everything, is because I wanted to see the spacing. And I'm using pumice stone oxide ink in order to put a little bit of rays coming around, like it's shining from the stag. And then I'm going to use the larger one that layers with that, too. 
and put that on and put a few more of those rays. I didn't use all of them. I kind of used just that first little section because they're kind of spaced out. Use that first section and put those on. And I found that the watercolor paper was really absorbent actually and it kind of started muting some of those inks on top. So a little bit later I did end up taking some silver and putting those back on too for the rays. And I just glued that down to that panel. I used a liquid glue and now I'm using some foam dots in order to pop Harry out. And as you can see I used a, a scrap piece of paper just to push that down just to so I didn't smear everything. And now I'm putting Harry on. And then I used a Nina Solar White cardstock and I cut that in slimline dimensions which is eight and a three quarters by seven and a half and then scored at the three and a, a quarter three three and three quarter inch mark and then as you can see that was when I went back and added a little bit of the silver and I also added some of the silver to the stag because the stag is supposed to be a silvery misty thing and then the the spell that Harry Potter said when he was um, conjuring up his Patronus was expecto Patronum and so that is what my sentiment says and just another little fun fact that Harry Potter's father's Patronus was the same as him and you can hear the dogs and the pig in the background now perfect and to finish off the card I went and just added some dew drops that were already in my stash thank you so much to Trinity Stamps for giving me the opportunity to be their guest designer for April I definitely love working with their products please visit their blog for lots of inspiration trinitystamps.com please like below and if you haven't subscribed yet I'd really appreciate your support Check out my blog at katahdencrafts.com and find me on Instagram at katahdencrafts. Stay safe at home and craft, everyone. Thank you for stopping in.